Okay, if you read my abstract, um, this talk is about mutation testing. Um, mutation testing is not a very new concept. Actually, it's uh, more than 50 years old, the concept uh, itself. And the first implementation of this concept mutation testing was done in 1980, I think. So um, more, than, more than 40 years ago. But still, I haven't seen uh, mutation testing out in the wild, I would say. Um, I, I work in many projects. I haven't seen any of them uh, using mutation testing, even though it's, I think it's a really great concept uh, to stabilize your, your tests. But maybe I can change this with this talk uh, uh, and try to... Uh, convince you that this is a really good concept we should think about uh, using. But first of all, um, some words about me. <laughs> this picture is like two years old. You can see what corona does <laughs> to, to your hair. <laughs> um, I'm a freelancing IT consultant from Germany. Um, I have l more than 20, almost 25 years experience in, in the IT business as a consultant and like f in, I'm in my 10th year now freelancing. Um, and I like to give back to the community. Uh, I co-organize uh, meetups in Cologne and in Dusseldorf, this is where I live, ne or ne I live nearby there. Uh, those are Softworks Kama uh, meetups. This is the German uh, branch of the software crafting community. Um, so, and uh, yeah, I'm also co-organizing the Socrates uh, meet, um, conference in Salta this year. So, if you're not joined the lottery yet and want to be there, just just do so. Um, okay, and then some contacts of mine. So, what is the, the agenda for this talk, it's, uh, I want to explain to you what is mutation testing, how exactly does it work. I also have some uh, little small demo uh, uh, for you and I want to give you some tips on how to use it. But first, I have some questions for you. Um, so who of you is, is writing unit tests? Okay, that's fabulous. <laughs> And who of you is writing them first? Okay, <laughs> already less. <laughs> and uh, which company is, is giving like target numbers and, and, and code coverage? Uh, do we have this, like 60%, 80% the thing? Okay, yes. Yeah, um, and who is cheating, who is already cheated? Uh, reaching these numbers. <laughs> yeah. And um, who of you already knows mutation testing and what it is? So some, okay. Hope you learned something new. <laughs> okay, as we all know, um, even with 100% code coverage, uh, you can't really tell whether you're tests are reliable, you can cheat, as we have seen. Uh, you can just skip the asserts and it's still counting in code coverage. Uh, and yeah, actually, um, testing just, um, just uh, you, can, you cannot uh, prove the absence of, of uh, uh, bugs, you just can show that bugs are, were present or, or prove that they are not present at this, uh, for this uh, piece of code. As um, I just recently saw a, a tweet from, from Alan Holub, Holub, I don't know how, how to pronounce his last name, saying every bug is really a missing test. And the answer was, uh, could also be a faulty test, but and then the answer is, but then you need a test for your test. And Ellen says, yeah, exactly. That's what rotation testing is about. So 
the question is, how can we do that? How can we check whether our tests or our data we use in our tests are good and reliable? And I said it like 20 times already, the answer is mutation testing, or one of the answers is mutation testing. But how exactly, how exactly does this work? So what, what we need uh, for doing mutation testing is we need, we need a tested code base. So we need tests. We can't do mutation testing without any tests. Okay. The second uh, thing we need is those tests, the test code base, the tested code base, or our tests must all be green. Otherwise, the mutation testing won't work. Okay. But then, then it goes. Uh, then we introduce some code change, a little small code change to our code base. This is called we reproduce a mutant. This is just very tiny, small t uh, change to our code base. So, and then we run the tests again with this changed code ba base. So what would you expect happens? At least, at least some tests should fail, or one test at least should fail. So this, if, if the test fails, and that's why the, 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 the title of this talk, if this one, at least one test fails, this is a good thing. So we, we, killed, the mut we killed the mutant, okay? This is quite a martial language <laughs> and mutation language. So we kill mutants, <laughs> and if none of our tests fails, it's, it's said that the mutant survived. So still all, all of the tests are green, the mutant survived, and this is not, nothing we want to have. Okay, and then we repeat the cycle. We go back to our original code base, change another small thing, and do it all over again. Okay, you can imagine, you, you wouldn't want to do that by hand, uh, so I show you uh, what kind of frameworks will, will help. So, now we, we talked about a mutant, we produce a mutant, what kind of mutants uh, are we talking about here? These are, as I said, small little changes. For instance, you could say we, we change the conditional boundaries. If we have somewhere an if statement, if A uh, lower than B, the mutation would change it to if A lower and equal to B, for instance. Or the other way around. Lower equals becomes uh, lower than, greater than becomes greater than equals, and so on. This is just um, one ex uh, the examples for conditional boundaries. We have many, many more muta mutators, uh, like we could uh, negate no uh, conditionals. Equals becomes not equals, uh, greater than becomes lower than or lower equals, and so on. We have uh, things like uh, increment mutators, plus plus becomes minus minus, and so on. Or we could uh, uh, invert something. We do not return i, but minus i, or the other way around. Uh, or mass mutators, you already guessed it, <laughs> plus becomes minus. Uh, multiply uh, uh, will be a division, and so on. Left shift to right shift, things like that. And there are, there's many, many more. Some of them are really, really interesting depending on uh, the language, really, you use. Some, some of the mutators don't apply to every language, but uh, mostly the frameworks you use later for, for the language, the, the mutation frameworks, will have 
uh, those mutators uh, already implemented, or you couldn't write them yourself. So what kind of mutations do we talk about? Like, um, if we somewhere call a void method, the mutation would be that we don't call that void method. We just skip that call. Interesting question, what happens? Or um, we return an empty list, always. We always return an empty list when we call a, 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 message, uh, a, a method. Or something like we uh, have something like if, if you have a logical uh, construct, we always return false or always return, always return true. Or something like um, we get, give back null. If some method gives back an object, uh, now there will be null returned. Or if you have primitives returned, then we return zero. <laughs> something like that. So yeah, this, these are interesting things. And there's still, uh, for instance, if you have a constructor call somewhere, that then we replace this constructor with, with a null. So our, our object is not initialized in a way. So, and then all those mutations, uh, as I said, there's only one mutation done at one, at one cycle and all these mutations applied and see how, how your tests are reacting. This can, oh, there, there are still many more um, mutators. Uh, you have to look up your, uh, your uh, uh, description of your framework you use for, for the mutators, or you can think of your own mutators maybe implemented. So what kind of problems can we detect with this uh, method? The answer is, um, for one, we can uh, detect like poorly chosen or missing test data. If, if you have like tests which, which do not uh, uh, test like boundaries for, for values, like if you want to uh, test if, if a person is uh, underage or overaged, and, and you only test with underage like 12 years old and overage like um, uh, 24 years old or something like that. Or, uh, yeah, and not, not on the border of 18 or something. You can find this kind of thing. You can find um, ambiguities in your code base or even logical errors. And you can find missing test coverage, but this is not only a, a thing with, with, which, um, for which you need mutation testing. Missing test coverage, you, you can uh, find out with any other tool as well. Okay. What, what kind of problems cannot be solved with this? Um, there's one thing, it's called uh, Equivalent mutations. Those are mutations that don't sh really change the code base. There is no solution or no, no test data which can kill this mutant. So it's, um, yeah, you have to be aware of these kind of mutations. Uh, they cannot be killed per definition. But some Frameworks, they try to, to avoid, avoid these kind of mutations. Uh, they are not always successful uh, because they, they don't look into the logic of, of the program. But uh, there are some uh, measures where, where they could still find out whether this is, uh, would be an equivalent mutation. And there's, there's something like, <laughs> it's called a stubborn mutation. Um, you think you would think it's an equivalent mutation, but it's not. There, there are existing uh, test data where you can kill this mutation, but you haven't just found them yet. <laughs> you have to dig deeper, 
Uh, maybe those are hard to find. Okay. And then after, after you've done your mutation testing, there, there will be something like a, a report. And this is a report from, from a tool called uh, PyTest. And it looks something like this. You have uh, uh, the line coverage. So this, uh, this is uh, how many lines are uh, covered by testing and the mutation coverage. In this case here, it would say that you have 39 mutations in your program and uh, 38 were killed. And uh, yeah, so your mutation cover is 97%. And uh, there's another um, metric called uh, test strength, and test strength is the, uh, is the ratio of the number of mutations killed uh, by the tests, by the test to the number of mutations covered by the tests. So one is the mutation coverage is uh, taking in account, uh, into account all the code, and the test strengths taking into account just the tested uh, code for, for the mutations. And you can find out something like, um, what you can f easily find is something like where is a big, uh, number of cyclomatic complexity in your code. If you have lots of mutations in one line, for instance, I will show you that, then you can say, oh, maybe this logic here is a bit too heavy and, and you have too many uh, mutations available here in, in this line of code. So I, I want to show you um, what I mean <laughs> with, this, with all this. So here goes. Um, I have to switch to <laughs> um, mirror and okay. Should I should I switch to? Can you see all this code, or is it a little little small? Or maybe okay. But the code really is not, it's not really that interesting. What I have here is I wrote a little uh, 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 Spring Boot application and I got the idea from, um, from a, uh, a mutation testing framework called uh, Striker. It's, I think it's for JavaScript. And they have uh, this little program. Uh, actually, it, it runs like this. Um, uh, sorry. Wait. No. Uh, it's a. It's called a robo bar. I have to go. So you can order drinks here. And uh, we have non-alcoholic drinks or alcoholic drinks, and then you can submit the order. And once you you ordered an uh, alcoholic drink, you have to put in your age so that, that it will proceed the order. So if I say I'm 21, which I'm not, <laughs> I can order the strings and so on. Uh, yeah, Th this little application. And um, that is the code for the application. I don't really want to show you the code, but what I want to show you is that if, if I run this, um, This is without mutation testing now. Um, this is running uh, um, Chococo in the background. It takes a bit. We remember those 12 seconds, okay? Like, it takes about 12 seconds now, and the result is that I have 100% uh, uh, code coverage with my tests. Okay, I would think, mm, great, 100%, I'm, I'm really safe here. But when I, when I uh, do the, com uh, the, the, the build again, now with mutation testing, and there's a, 
there's, I use Maven here, there's a Maven plugin for that. So I, I activate uh, the PyTest mutation coverage. Uh, you will see that it already takes much longer to, to build my project now. We remember it was 12 seconds before. And now it has to do a lot of mutations and so on and so on. And it takes even longer. It takes now some, something like 23 to 25 seconds. So, And I show you the, the result of that. It's you can see um, I still have 100% line coverage, but something is wrong with my tests. Some, some mutation, um, mutations are not killed. Like I have two classes, drink service and RoboBar controller, and both, both are not really good. Some are even under 80% coverage with mutation. Okay. What, what did I do? I, I have my uh, Maven project here, and I put in um, a plugin here, PyTest Maven plugin. And here, here I can say um, uh, which mutators to use. You can you can choose uh, you have you can choose those mutators which are applied uh, one by one or there this is a group of mutators in this case for PyTest it's stronger uh, but I will show you which mutation mutators were were uh, uh, applied and you can say which classes not to uh, uh, cover with mutation testing, or you can even say which with met methods not to to um, to deal uh, which method not to apply, and so on. Yeah, and where to put the report. So, so if if we go back to to the report, how does it look like? Let's let's look at the drink service. It first of all it shows you the the whole uh, source code. And then the lighter green lights, or the uh, lighter green lights are the lines uh, um, covered by testing, and the darker green lines are the lines uh, where mut uh, mutations were applied. And then, if you hover over here, it will tell you which kind of mutation uh, was applied, and whether this mutant was killed or not. And here you can see in, uh, here in this line, there were like two mutations applied and both were killed. So dark green means everything is fine. All my mutations uh, which were applied here in, the, in these lines, they were killed. But scrolling down here, there, there is some area where mutations were, were done, but not all of them were killed. You see here, this, uh, in this line, there was a, a mutation applied replaced Boolean return with true, so always return true, and this mutation uh, survived. So I do not have a test which kills this mutation. So I should look into my test whether I, I find the, the spot and maybe write a a new test or choose other data to test with and so on and so on. And here you can see in this line there there were like six mutations applied. This is what I what I wanted to tell you. It's like um, this this line has obviously a pretty high uh, uh, cyclomatic complexity to it. So and Three of four of six even even survived, so <laughs> pretty shitty test coverage, even though I have like a hundred percent line coverage. Hmm. Something's wrong here. And this uh, this is a, a different view 
where, where it says, okay, in line 32, I applied these mutations and they were killed or not killed. This is basically a different, different view from, from this above here. Just shorter and maybe more, uh, yeah, more to the point. And over here you see which mutators were applied. This was uh, what I put in the stronger in, in, uh, in the POM. Uh, all these muta mutators were applied with, uh, they were in the stronger group. Okay. And uh, if I have a look in the other, in my controller class, there's also something wrong here. So I have to, would have to investigate. Maybe there is, there is something like an equi equivalent mutator inside, which I cannot kill. Okay, but that I have to live with then. I could also integrate this, um, this thing in my um, uh, continuous integration and say, okay, if, if, you, if you work with numbers like 80% line coverage, maybe you also want to have a, a mutation coverage uh, a number, and then you can put in some th uh, threshold here uh, where you test, uh, where your build will fail. And since I only have like 79% mutation coverage, if I build this again, then uh, my build will fail and my CI pipeline will fail. I can do that as well. Okay, just <laughs> wait a few more seconds. And then you see mutation score is below the threshold, and this, this is why my test or my build failed. And in uh, here in the log, it tells you exactly what what is doing and what is uh, 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 failing and what is killed and what survived and and why. And uh, so it's pretty pretty. Um, both messages you can have. Okay. So, uh, back to my presentation, hopefully. Okay. Of course, um, there's not only advantages to mutation testing, it also has dis disadvantages. Um, and those are, it's, it can be quite time consuming, running all these mutations and, and, and doing all the tests. It depends already on how long your test suite runs and it, it just multiplies all the time. And uh, you have these equivalent mutations, and you cannot use it with uh, uh, black book testing. Just to, to see uh, the cost of mutations, just uh, an, an example, let's say you have like 300 classes with 10 ca test cases, and each test case runs uh, 0.2 seconds. You already have a test suite of, of about 10 minutes. Maybe you know this kind of thing. And then if you apply mutation testing on top of that with a lot of mut mutants, or mutation, uh, um, mutations, then you can end easily up with like uh, hours or <laughs> almost days of mutation testing. So the question is, how can you reduce, how can you reduce these, these kind of costs? The obvious thing would be just reduce the number of mut um, mutators you apply. Uh, that's the easy one. <laughs> uh, or even reduce or additionally reduce the, the number of classes you apply mutation testing to. So you, you just maybe do it to, to your really core business uh, uh, source code and not all the things around it as well. Or you can 
at least with uh, with this pie test I show you, I showed you you can do something like um, incremental an analysis. Um, I will show it to you uh, in a second. This is an idea where uh, PyTest writes some kind of history files, and um, once you have the history file, it will look at in, into the history file and, and uh, see uh, whether the the code was changed uh, before uh, in comparison to to the last run. And if it was not changed, then probably the the result would be the the same, and it just skips this this mutation. And it already helps helps a lot. I can show you this, or you can use something like um, the <laughs> extreme mutation strategy. This is uh, something. The idea is that uh, you replace the whole method uh, content and just uh, say, "Okay, I I don't care what's inside the method. I just care what what uh, the method is giving back." Uh, and and I just mutate the return code, uh, return values, and you have something like, at most like, three mutations per method, and not uh, ten or twenty. Um, okay, I can show you both both of these things um, here. Co go back to my code. Uh, So first, um, first the the thing with with the history files um, in PyTest you can activate uh, this. Um, you say okay, uh, write a history when you do mutation testing, and when I run this now, it will take for the first time it will still take like 23 seconds. But the next time I do it, uh, I think I tried it, it was like half of it, even though I, uh, or especially since I do not change any code right now. It will just figure out that nothing has changed and everything, the results must be the same. Oh, I still have my threshold, okay. Uh, where is it? There. But still, it, it was like 23 seconds. And now if I, if I run it again, it should be much shorter. It's like, I think it was like 12, 13, yeah, 15 seconds, okay. So just by writing a history file. And this is the history file written here. Uh, some, some sort of gibberish. <laughs> so uh, the, other, the other thing was um, you used this extreme mutation testing thing. And this is, um, I prepared it in, in the POM. This is uh, some, some different kind of uh, um, so-called uh, uh, mutation engine you use. The default mutation engine is, I think it's called, I, I put it here, it's called Gregor. But uh, you can write your own mutation engines. Um, and this is what some people did for, for this uh, extreme, um, extreme mutation testing uh, thing. And they call this Discardis. And I put in the, uh, the plug in here as well, and I want to show you how this uh, how this works and how the, the 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 report looks like. So I just activated with the profile discarders, and uh, it will run about. I think for for this test, it will still run about uh, 23 seconds. It should be. It should be uh, faster, but maybe my, my code sample is, uh, yeah, n not the right one for that. <laughs> okay, and then here are the test results. 
let's see. Um, to go. This is um, the pie test with, with the Descartes uh, engine, mutation engine. You already see compared to, to, the, to the other one. I go back here. We have like uh, 43 mutations applied, uh, and here now we only have like 27 mutations applied. And if you look into it, it looks a lot different. Uh, the, the, the kind of mutators that, that are applied. So what it does is like uh, it just returns null or uh, it just returns false for the whole method depending on the method, or it, it, if, it, uh, if the method returns a string, it uh, just returns an empty string, or an A, or a null, or something like that. So you only have like um, one or two mutations uh, at most for every method. And this, this is why it goes much faster. What is the, um, what is the advantage of using this kind of uh, mutation engine? It's you could you could say, okay, um, in my CI pipeline, I first do it with discarders, and if everything goes uh, green here, then I then I apply the normal mutation engine, the, the Gregor engine, and if I already have something here, some some uh, topics coming up here, then obviously um, my my tests are still not covering all the methods or all the, yeah. So I can, because this is supposed to be much faster than the Gregor engine, um, so I can kind of be faster finding out why, why my test uh, suite is not strong enough, uh, strong enough. Okay. Uh, no. Yeah, this is all I wanted to show you here. Back to my slides. <laughs> so, um, a really ex uh, very good source of where to find uh, uh, mutation test tools for all sorts of languages. Uh, is, is this site, um, I don't know whether you, you know those, these kind of awesome sites, I just only recently learned about it, uh, that, that there are, uh, in GitHub there, there's these awesome sites, they're marked uh, with, with some special uh, tag, awesome, and they're, they're some wrote up on an awesome site for mutation testing. You can get all the information there, which, uh, um, frameworks to use for which language, and yeah, you can find all the links there and all the descriptions. And then I said I wanted to give you some tips. <laughs> so if, if you want to try it, uh, I, as I said, I, I have never seen it in the wild, uh, uh, used in the wild, uh, but I'm, I'm a freelancer. I just started a new project, and I promised myself that I will do mutation testing in this project. <laughs> and I will try it, and then I will try it again. And my tip is just start small, uh, write more tests, um, get yourself familiar with the framework, how it, how it works, and what kind of uh, uh, hints it, give, it gives you. Um, configure it. So just don't do a whole project, cover it with mutation tests, and just don't do it, just start small, as I said. Um, and don't strive for 100%. <laughs> and yeah, you can see. Okay. So, time for questions, if you have any. Thank you. So sorry if I missed this part, but because maybe you have talked about it, but maybe I miss it. Uh, so what I understood is that we apply mutations one at a time, right? Yes. Uh, even though 
it would probably increase drastically build times. Uh, is there any option to combine mutators? And uh, no, it's okay. it's not the uh, it's just really one single mutation at a time. Okay. Only uh, otherwise you cannot tell uh, uh, which mutation causes what causes what problems. If you have a combination of that, you you cannot tell them apart. Makes sense. Thanks. Uh, and wh what about uh, just trying uh, the random mutations, not all of them? I mean, as a, what's it called, engine strategy? Does it, will it work? What do you think? I guess you haven't tried. Uh, as far as I know, uh, at least with the PyTest framework, you can tell which mutators should be applied. Uh, you can just choose a few, uh, but you cannot say it um, uh, only take uh, or randomly take this one or that one. No, you can't do that. Because, for example, there can be, I don't know, uh, uh, 100 greater than uh, operators in your code, for example, but you don't uh, try to mutate all of them, you just replace a par part, and mm. then it can uh, make, uh, make it much faster, I guess. No, not uh, not um, that I'm aware of. Uh, so m maybe, but I d I don't know. Maybe you should write your own <laughs> mutation engine. <laughs> and uh, do you think it's really useful in the pipelines? I mean, for me, it looks like uh, more of a developer, uh, more of a uh, tool for developers. I would think so too, but uh, I think it's also useful uh, uh, in pipelines. Maybe not in, in, in like uh, after every every push, but something like on a nightly pipeline uh, uh, build that you see um, whether your your test you write are still strong, and and uh, whether you have used the right data or whether you miss some um, s some things you, you didn't think about in, in your test, and this will show you this. Right, I guess it's a matter of trying things. Yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> uh, I know it may out of, of the scope of mutation test, but uh, sometimes I think that the the concept of testing or testing frameworks sometimes overlap or overlap each other or they are out of the original scope. For example, uh, concerning the functional testing and automation, automatized testing, uh, do you think that they, they come together or, or they are different concepts? Because usually when, when do you want to, to do fun functional tests, you need some automation tool, for example, Selenium or Cucumber. So what do you think uh, about that? Um, I don't know whether, whether it's, it's a good idea to, to apply mutation testing to, to uh, like, um, testing uh, UI. I'm, I'm not so sure about that. It's, it's more testing, testing logical things. Uh. Yes, oh, OK. And um, uh, you put a simple of uh, alcohol drinks. Uh, you usually in your application, uh, you will uh, write a case for for the opposite uh, thing, or, or or in this case, uh, you will use the mutation test just for analyze the the possibilities of a uh, test. For example, in your application, you really don't don't want to share alcohol to a to someone uh, which is not uh, above the 21 years, no? I don't know whether I <laughs> yes, got your uh, question. Uh, do you only want to, to share our call to, to a person which is more than 21 years old, for example, oh, in America? 18 years old, yeah. Uh, yeah. But usually you, you, you will not write the opposite test for that mutation or uh, yeah, you hopefully have a test that that uh, uh, um, um, not only tests like uh, whether you, the person is uh, 
20 years, 21 years old, but you have a test that tests like whether it's 18 years old or 17 years old and right on the borders. And mutation testing could tell you, yeah, you've, you found the right data for your tests or you missed some data for your tests. So, uh, uh, yes, but maybe the opera can operator can be the opposite, no, for example, or... or could be a mutation which uh, switch your operator from major to minus, or yeah, yeah, it will switch the uh, switch the operator to lower than, and then your your test should fail, and then yeah, it's uh -huh. I, maybe we can talk uh, okay. afterwards. I got it. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you all, and um, enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you. <laughs>